All right, we gotta do it. We gotta do a follow-up to the video I made on the FC, whatever the heck this is called, FC80, and how bad it is. $320 external tuner. Some people were, some people were suggesting, well, uh, and, and a radio's internal tuner is usually only three to one. This is not an internal, this is external. Do you see how this is not in a radio, okay? Another thing people latched onto the fact that yes, I said, this is a pack antenna, nine to one antenna in its stock configuration. I think, I think it's 31 feet. It's not, I misspoke. I was wrong. It's 29 feet. You could have just done a Google search. How long is a pack antenna 29 or a pack antenna nine to one random wire antenna? But you didn't. You didn't. You just left comments. The keyboard warriors, they're out there. Okay, let me get one other thing out of the way. I'm a sad ham. I said it. See, let's type it in there. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do an experiment. We got some things going on here, okay? We've got, first of all, the beautiful, delicious Pactenna 9 to 1 random wire antenna in its stock configuration, which is a 29 foot radiating element. We have the uh, choke there from KF8, what is this call sign? KF8 ASE. This is all made of Messi and Poloni. We've got the Messi and Poloni uh, Airborne 5 coax again. I actually measured my counterpoise wire here. Uh, it is a 17 foot counterpoise, okay? It's actually 16 feet, 10 and a half inches. Uh, and then we have the uh, POTA, whatever the heck this thing, the, the POTA 33 uh, carbon fiber mass there, okay? Some other people wanted to see the antenna on my Zoom, my rig expert. So we're gonna show you all the bands, okay? I'm gonna show you the 7300 in its stock configuration. We'll tune this, it's on emergency tune right now. I'm gonna show you both. We've got the MFJ 939 auto tuner. We've got the ATU 10, and we have a manual MFJ 971 tuner. All of these tuners, I think the MFJs were probably, this one might have been like 200 bucks new. I don't know how much this was new, but I paid like $50 at a, at a ham swap at the Livonia uh, ham swap years and years ago. And the ATU 10 is still currently available depending on where you buy it. They're anywhere from about 80 to $120. So let's take a look at all of this stuff and show you all of these things and how they tune this antenna versus how the FC80 did not tune a damn thing. But all our tuner's doing is showing your radio a max 50 ohm impedance. You have to have a 50 ohm antenna. It has to be a dipole in order for you to get any kind of effective radiation, otherwise you're not a real ham. That's totally not true. Antenna tuners perform a great service and they make un or non-resonant antennas work really well like the nine to one random wire antenna or a doublet antenna or a G5 RV antenna or a four to one, the Ribicoff that all the kids are using today. There's so many non-resonant antennas in the world today. And there, I mean, none of these are new, but they work, they all work. I used uh, a different MFJ manual tuner several years ago to tune my 40 meter antenna on 160 meters so I could make some contacts on the 160 meter AM contest that was going on, okay? A nine to one antenna is a random wire antenna. It's not actually random, there's specific lengths of wire that are not resonant or not harmonics of any of the ham bands, but it's, it's close. That nine to one transformer gets us close so we can use our antenna tuners to get our radio a match that the radio wants to see, that doesn't mean it's not an effective antenna. This nine to one is a hell of an antenna. I did a comparison between the Pactana nine to one and the Pactana 49 to one, link in the description, that you can watch if you don't believe me. The nine to one also has lots of advantages being that especially with this 29 foot radiating element, sometimes you're out in the park, you're out in the field, you're out in the wild, you don't have room to put up a huge antenna like say a 66 foot uh, 49 to one NFET half wave that is a resonant antenna. So for the people that ask, well, why don't you hook this up to a 49 to one? Well, a 49 to one's already resonant. Why would I put a tuner on it? Why do you think I use a 49 to one? I don't generally use tuners. I use resonant antennas, but I got this. I said, hell, let's take a look at it. And it sucked. So there, now let's get on with the show. So first, some of you wanted to see what this 29 foot nine to one random wire antenna looked like on my rig expert analyzer. So here we are, there's 80, 40, 30, 20, 17. Let me adjust the frequencies so we can get 15, 12, and 10. 
and here we are, 15, 12, and 10 meters. Okay, frequencies chosen at random. So now we've seen the SWR from 80 through 10 of all the bands on this 29 foot, nine to one random wire antenna. We're gonna be using our Modern Morse no code extra custom CW key. Here's the 7300. Why the 7300? Because this is the only radio that I own that I use for portable that has an, an internal tuner built in other than my G90, but we all know the G90 will tune literally anything. So emergency tuner is not on, okay? We'll do that in a minute and that would say E right there, but right now it doesn't. So 160 meters, doesn't tune, wouldn't expect it to. Let's go to 80, doesn't tune. 40, oh look at that, it tuned. 1.2, 1.3. 30 meters, doesn't tune it. 20 meters, look at that, we got a tune, no SWR. 17 meters, tuned, 1.43, whatever you wanna call that. 15 meters, doesn't tune 15. 12 meters, got a match, no SWR. And 10 meters, tune, no problem, no SWR. But wait, there's more. Go to menu, set, others, emergency, tuner, okay, reset. Emergency mode tuner on. Watch this. 160 meters with a 7300. Still doesn't like that. No problem, that's a big ask. 80 meters. Oh, look at that, it's tuning. <laughs> Barely tickling the SWR meter, all right? 40 meters, we already know it can do this, but let's do it again. Look at that, no SWR. 30 meters, didn't tune before, what'll it do now? Oh look, it tuned. Barely making a blip on the SWR meter. Here's 20 meters, no SWR. 17 meters. Oh look at that, it found a tune, no SWR. 15 meters. We got a match, no SWR. Great, this means we can use this antenna with this radio. The only downside is we only get 50 watts output on the 7300 when we're in emergency tuner mode. 12 meters, no SWR. And 10 meters, just like that, 1.2-ish, whatever, okay. Just the stock 7300, nothing done to it, and the 7300 Mark II will do the same darn thing. Now we have the Yaesu FTX connected to the MFJ 939 auto tuner. I don't know if this does 160 meters, it's not working. But let's go to 80 meters. Oh look at that, it's tuning. 1.2 maybe-ish. 40 meters. Oh look at that. Very low SWR there. 30 meters. 1.4-ish maybe. 20 meters, 1.0 to 1, 17 meters, 1.4 to 1, 15 meters, <laughs> flat, nothing, 1.0 to 1, 12 meters, eh, 1.5, 1.6, and 10 meters, there we are, 1.0 to 1. Just like that. Now here we'll take a look at a manual tuner. This is the MFJ 971, and honestly, I'm not gonna go through all the bands because I don't feel like dealing with all this stuff. But basically, you turn the inductor till you hear the loudest noise, then you turn the antenna and the transmitter one till you hear even more noise. And look at that on 180 meters, 160 meters, we got uh, best I can get is about a 2.5 to one, just like that. But just for giggles, I'll show you one more band. Here's 80 meters, again, 29 foot piece of wire, 1.0 to one SWR. And for my last trick, this is the Pure Chinesium ATU-10 that I use for my Yesu 818. It's not connected to the 818. None of the chokes are connected. It's going from the radio into the tuner and then out to the uh, antenna. And yes, I know the frame rate sucks. Frame rates are a bitch. Am I right? But here we go. 160 meters. Just tunes automatically. Not the greatest tuner in the world, but we still got maybe a four to one match there. Hey, at least it found a match, which this guy did not. Okay, so we, ah, we could still use that. We could still use it in a pinch, we could. Here's 80 meters, automatically tuning up. Got about a three to one. This says, this says about four and a half to one. The radio says three to one. I'm gonna trust the radio. You pick whichever one you want. Let's go to 40, tuning 1.0 to one. 
Here's 30 meters. 1.0 to 1. Here's 20 meters. 1.0 to 1. 17 meters. 1.0 to 1. 15. 1.0 to 1. 12. Yeah, 1.3, 1.4-ish, and 10, 1.0, 1 1.3, let's hit retune again, let's make it do it again, there, 1.0 to 1, on a, call it a $100 tuner. So what's the point of all this? Well, the point is, as I said in the video that I made about this, if I paid $320 for an external antenna tuner, whose specifications are posted nowhere on the internet, which is, you know, kind of a red flag, I would expect this tuner to be able to tune a nine to one random wire antenna. But it doesn't. But all of these other ones do, including the 7300. It's crazy. So, yeah, again, Yesu kind of missed the boat on this one. So, I don't know, that's, I'm probably forgetting other things that I wanted to come back at some of the comments there, but, you know, the, the point is, if you pay for an external tuner, at least my expectation is that it should have a very wide tuning range, like a 10 to 1, okay, which kind of all of these do-ish. This one, I think, I think this is only made for like the guy that's already using a resonant antenna, but like, and there, and I'm not this guy, but there's some guys that like, they're seeing a 1.5 on their, on their SWR meter and that's just unacceptable for them. So they gotta hit that tune button so their meter shows nothing. I think that's what this tuner is for. But at that point, you already have a resonant antenna. There's no reason to use a tuner unless you just, don't want to see that little SWR meter doing anything. So I stand by my words, what is the point of this tuner, especially for $320? You could buy all of these tuners, both MFJs and the ATU-10, for the same price as this. And a lot of guys commented, get an LDG tuner. I've not used LDG tuners. They have reached out to me and asked me to review them. Uh, but we, and we went back and forth a little bit, but I kind of never followed up on it because I, I don't use tuners. So maybe I should, what do you think? Should I get back in touch with LDG and review some of their tuners? Which tuners do you want to see reviewed? They got a great reputation. I've used one once, it was a friend of mine's. Worked great, I think we were using an 817, it was like the tiny little, I think it was the 817 version, I forget which one it was, it might not have been that one. But either way, you just push the button, and it went boop, and it tuned, and it was great, and we made contacts, and we were sitting right on the shore of Lake Erie, and I think, was that with Mike, N8YL? Mike, was that with you? I don't know. I'm rambling, my name is Mike Cade, I'm already, thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube, we'll see you next time.